Here are three changes that you can make, three additions to your training that you can make to run way faster for 5K or park run. This is literally three things that I did to take myself from running 18 minutes 20 for 5K to three weeks later, running nearly two minutes faster and running 16 minutes 30. So number one, I, had, I knew I had to respect pacing more. I was going out fast and I was finishing fast, but dying in the second, third and fourth kilometer. I was doing what every new person does to running 5K. They think it's only short, it's only 16, 20, 25, 30 minutes of hard work. I'm gonna go out fast. And I went out fast with the leaders, ran the first kilometer fast and then died the second, third and fourth kilometer and then found energy from what appeared to be nowhere and finished fast and got a quicker time of 18, 20. I, want, I knew that I could be more strategic and, and more conservative with my energy to pace it better. But I didn't know what pace I was capable of because all the runs that I'd been doing were longer than 5K. And so this is what I changed. I started to break up the 5K into smaller chunks. So I just very simply ran 500 meter repeats and ran them 1820, I'm thinking if I can run 50 seconds quicker, I can run 1730 and that's huge. It's a huge leap forward. So if I can hold 330 per kilometer for 500 meters, that's what I need to start doing. And that's what I was doing. And naturally that would get a little bit quicker. And sometimes I'd finish fast at 320 or 315 for the 500 meter. And then I think, okay, it's possible to run a little bit faster. Maybe I can run 320 per kilometer, but I need to increase the, the, the length of these reps. Then I'd start running kilometer reps and do three times a kilometer in 320 or 330. And it would start to have this accumulated effect that I can run 500 meters quick and I can run a kilometer quick. Now what do I need to do? And this is only two and a half weeks of training. So it's only like two sessions per week not going after the long run, not going after the endurance and stamina, knowing that there's not very much you could do on that within two and a half, three weeks. And then thinking, okay, if I'm really gonna go out and try to run, and for me, this is the key point, and it's what, it's a simple point, but it's, it's something that a lot of people don't do because they, they, they neglect the faster pace, they neglect the shorter intervals, and then they, they, they miss this stepping stone, which for me is really important, especially for something like 5K, but for 10K as well, it works. I figured that if I can't go out and run two times 2.5K in the pace that I want to run, then I'm not gonna be able to do it for the park run. I'm not gonna be able to do it for the 5K. So it's really important for me to go out and run two times 2.5K as quick as I could. And at the time, and this was basics, we're going back 14 or 15 years, at the time for me, that was run as fast as you possibly can, as if it's the race, and then rest as long as I need in order to sort of get, get my breath back to two, three minutes, too long of a rest of what I would take now, and then do it all again. And it worked, and it made me sort of run eight minutes 30, eight minutes 30 for that type of rep, which meant that although it was basic and I didn't really understand the fundamentals of running a fast 5K back then, that strategy is it's very simple, it's 5K, two times 2.5K. If you can run half of it on your own at the pace that you wanna run on race day, and you could do that twice with a bit of rest, then maybe that race day energy, maybe that adrenaline, that fight or flight mode will carry you. And that's exactly what happened. And I went to the park run in Longsight in Manchester, and I remember sort of setting off and all of a sudden, I still had a Casio watch on. So I was still timing everything with, with a Casio watch. I was just going off that and there was, I think, kilometer uh, markings. And I won the race in 1620. So again, I finished fast, but I'd paced it better. So the, the fastest kilometer and the slowest kilometer were much more evenly together. But I went out more conservatively and I was with the lead pack. But when it came to the point where the, they would usually leave me and run away, and I would be sort of like, you know, your mouth gets dry, your heart's beating through your chest, you can't control your breathing. All of a sudden I was able to stay for longer. So I was able to pace it with them because I knew what they were running the weeks before and then go with the right people. And I can't remember the guy's name, but there was a, a guy who was really, really handy at this and really kind of a, a good runner and a good racer from one of the local clubs. And he took me through to pretty much almost three and a half, 4K. And then I just shot off the front and gave it absolutely everything. And I, I won, even though it was just a park run, to me, I'd won a race. And that ignited a fuel that didn't stop and still hasn't stopped to today. So 
from going from 1820, which I think I was fifth or sixth, to then thinking, okay, what do I actually do with this? And here's how you can change your plan. Okay, I need to break it up. So I need to get faster and I need to improve my top end speed. So I'm gonna run 500 meter intervals. What I'd do now is I'd probably break that up even further and run 250 meter intervals and then 500 meter intervals. And I'd definitely give myself more time than three weeks to run faster. I'd put a 13 week plan into place and work with a coach. But then running 500 meter repeats and getting used to building volume at that 330 pace and 320 pace, for me was logic logical to do that, be able to build that volume, be able to get comfortable at that pace, because if I couldn't run for 500 meters or a kilometer, I wasn't gonna be able to hold it for an entire five kilometers. And it's a long time to run for 10 minutes if you've paced it wrong, you know what it's like. But to run for 16, 30 or 18, 20, all out, 5K park runs, they're the hardest races to judge, way harder than a marathon. You can go out too fast in a marathon and you can sell down and think, oh, you got carried away with yourself and then bring it back, get back to your pacing and then go again. You can have a second bite of the cherry. Whereas in a 5K, once you blow up, if your body is full of lactic acid, it's gonna take you minutes to kind of recuperate and go again. And so it's a very, very difficult one to judge, but it's become again my favorite distance because you can do it very, very frequently and go all out and receive the feedback. So you can understand, okay, what do I need to change? Where am I getting good? I, I seem to be falling in the fourth kilometer and going slower in the fourth kilometer. What's that? Is it focus or is it energy? Do I need to improve my endurance and stamina or is it the top end speed? Usually it's both. And so for the five kilometers, if we can become good at training for five kilometer, then as soon as we move up in distances and people jump up to the bigger distances because it feels like there's much more kudos or much more respect for those bigger distances, 10K half marathon marathon, we become better at training because we've had more practice at 5K. So for me, it's really important. And if you want to take massive chunks out of your time, it doesn't matter whether you've been running for six months or you've been running for six years. If you've not trained with structure, and you've not been running fast and tapping into your top end speed and then building something specific into the weekend long run, the world's your oyster and you've got so much to go at, you should be super excited. So good luck.